Hello everyone and welcome back to the part 2 of example queries based on relational algebra. For the examples that we are going to discuss here in this video, there are mainly three relations that we are going to use. They are the employee relation having the employee details, the department relation having the details of each department and its manager, and lastly the dependent relation having the details of the dependents of the employees. Now who is a dependent? A dependent is a person who relies on someone for financial support. They could be your children or spouse. One employee could have more than one dependent. Now let's discuss the first question in this video. List the names of all employees with two or more dependents. We know that the names of all employees can be retrieved only from the employee relation and to know who is dependent on which employee, we get it from the dependent relation. So these are the two relations that we mainly use in this example. Here in the question, we see that they are asking for employees with two or more dependents, which means that we need to count the number of dependents for each employee to know which employee has two or more dependents. For that, we cannot use the basic relational algebra operations. We need to use the aggregate function here, that is the count aggregate function to count the number of dependents. So this is how we write the query. First, we need to count the total number of dependents for each employee, which is the first step. We have already learned the syntax of aggregate function in the lecture on additional algebra operations. First, we write the grouping attribute, followed by the aggregate function symbol, and then followed by the function list, and then the relation name on which we perform the aggregate function. As already mentioned, we know that one employee can have more than one dependent. So as per the question, to know which employee has more than one dependent, that is two or more dependents, we have to first group by the employee SSN and then apply the count aggregate function on each group. As already mentioned, first we group them by the employee SSN. So here we have two groups of employee SSN. And then the count function is applied to each of these two groups. In the first group, we see that there is only one dependent. And in the next group of employee SSN, we see that there are two dependents. Now this result is stored in relation T1 with attributes as SSN and number of dependents. Now that we've got the count of dependents of each employee, we can find out which employee has two or more dependents. And how do we do that? By selecting those tuples from this relation that has the number of dependents greater than or equal to 2, which is the next step in the query. Here we clearly see that there is only one tuple having the number of dependents greater than or equal to 2. So that tuple is selected and stored in this relation T2. Now we have the SSN of the employee having number of dependents greater than or equal to 2. But we are asked to list only the names of the employees with two or more dependents. We know that the names of the employees are present only in the employee relation. So we join this relation with the employee relation, which is the last step in the query. Here we are doing a natural join on these two relations. The join attribute here is SSN. And since the join attribute has the same name, we do not need to rename it. We can directly perform natural join. Here there is only one SSN from the employee relation that matches with the SSN from the T2 relation. Hence that combination of tuple will be the result of the natural join. From this result of the natural join, we project only the first name and last name of the employee and store it in this relation. Thus Jeremy Jones is the only employee with two or more dependents. Hope you understood this query. Now moving on to the next question, retrieve the names of the employees with no dependents. Again, we get the names of the employees from the employee relation and details of the dependents from the dependent relation. So how do we know which employee has no dependents? For that, we first list out the SSN of all the employees. And then from this relation, we know which all employees have dependents. So when we subtract them, we get the employees having no dependents. 
You will understand them better when we discuss the query step by step. So this is the solution to the question. As already discussed, the first step would be to list out the SSN from the employee relation. So here the SSN of all the employees are projected and stored in this relation. Now we need to list out the SSN of those employees having dependence, which is the next step in the query. Here all the SSN of the employees having dependence are projected and stored in this relation. Now we have a relation with a list of the SSN of all the employees and also we have a relation with a list of employees with dependence. So when we subtract these two relations, we get only those employees with no dependence. So when we subtract these two relations, we get only those employees with no dependence, which is the third step in the query. We already know how the set difference or the minus operation works. The result of the set difference would be tuples that are present only in this EMPS relation, but not in this relation. That is, we see here the first tuple from the EMPS relation is present only in this relation, but not in this relation. Therefore, this tuple will be displayed in the result. Next, the second tuple in the EMPS relation is also present in this relation. Therefore, this tuple will not be displayed in the result. Similarly, the third tuple from the EMPS relation is also present in this relation. And hence, that tuple also will not be displayed in the result. Finally, the last tuple from the EMPS relation is present only in this relation. Therefore, that tuple also will be displayed in the result. The result of this set difference is stored in this relation. So here we have got the SSN of the employees with no dependence. Now that we have got the SSN of the employees with no dependence, next we need to retrieve their names as asked in the question. And how do we do it? Again by joining this relation with the employee relation which is the last step in the query. Again here we know the join attribute is the SSN. It checks which of the SSN from the employee relation matches with the SSN from this relation. We see that there are two tuples from the employee relation that matches with the SSN from this relation. Hence that combination of tuple will be the result of the natural join. Now from this result of the natural join, we project only the first name and last name of the employee and store it in this relation. Therefore, these are the two employees with no dependence. Now moving on to the last example in this chapter relational algebra, list the names of managers who have at least one dependent. We already know that we get the names from the employee relation dependent details from the dependent relation and to know which all employees are managers, we get it from the department relation which we will see in the next slide. So how do we write the query? We first find out which all employees are managers by listing out the SSN of all the managers. Then we have to list out the SSN of all the employees with dependents and then check if there is any manager SSN in this relation to know if there are any managers having at least one dependent. So this is the query. Let us discuss them step by step. As I already mentioned, first we need to know who all are the managers and that we get it from the department relation. So that is the first step in the query. We project the manager SSN of all the managers from the department relation and store them in this relation with SSN as its attribute. If I wouldn't have mentioned this attribute name explicitly, then instead of this attribute name SSN, the attribute name would have been manager SSN. Next, we need to list out the SSN of the employees with dependents from the dependent relation, which is the second step in the query. So here the SSN of all the employees are projected from the dependent relation and stored in this relation with the attribute name ESSN renamed as SSN. We know that in this relation we have the SSN of all the managers and in this relation we have the SSN of those employees with dependents. So now from these two relations, we need to see the SSN that is present in both the relations or the SSN that is common to both the relations. How do we find the SSN that is common to both the relations or that is present in both the relations? 
by doing an intersection of these two relations which is the third step in the query. The result of this intersection operation would be tuples that are present in both the relations. Clearly we see here that there is only one SSN that is common to both the relations. So that SSN will be stored in this relation. Thus we got the SSN of the manager having at least one dependent. Now as asked in the question, to get the name of that manager, we have to join this relation with the employee relation just as we did in the previous examples too. So that will be the last step in the query. Again here the join attribute is the SSN. We see that there is only one SSN from the employee relation that matches with this SSN from this relation. Therefore, that combination of tuple will be the result of this natural join. Now, from the result of this natural join, we project only the first name and last name of the employee as asked in the question and then store it in this relation. Therefore, Jeremy Jones is the only manager who has at least one dependent. With this, we come to the end of this video and also the end of this chapter, Relational Algebra. Hope you have understood all the example queries and the concepts that we have discussed so far. Thank you.